Hi viewers, good day. Welcome to vSparks. Today we are going to see what is a Docker file and we are going to see a demo on how to create a Docker image or a container image from a Docker file. If you like this video, please subscribe to vSparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. We are going to discuss on these topics in this video. How to create your own images. Basically, there are plenty of images available in Docker Hub. Sometimes your application requirements wouldn't be satisfied with these images. Under this scenario, you need to create your own images. Now, how to create your own images. There are two ways to do this. First is to create an image from a running container. We have to run a basic container, do the necessary configurations on top of it and then commit the container as a container image. Please refer to the previous videos to see a demo on this approach. Second is to create an image from a docker file. Docker file is a simple text file which contains set of instructions. When you execute this Docker file, your image will be builded based on the instructions that you have given in this Docker file. We are going to see a demo for this case later in this video. Now, what is Docker file? As I already highlighted, Docker file is a simple text file written in a specific format which the docker can understand to build a docker image. How it does that? Docker actually reads the instructions or the commands from the docker file. If you closely look at the docker file, the text which is highlighted in blue are called as instructions or commands. To the right of every instructions, you are passing the arguments. What are the advantages of using a docker file than the other method to build an image? It is easy and simple to understand. It automates the image builds. It ensures the latest packages were built. These are some of the advantages. What is the best approach to create an image using docker file? Before writing any docker file, First, you need to summarize the steps for creating a custom image. For example, assume that we are going to build a custom web server. First, what we will do is we will use a base image to build our custom image. In this case, Ubuntu. Second, we will update the APT repositories. Third, we will install any dependent softwares. Fourth, we will copy the source code, in this case, the HTML codes. At last, we will run the application. Now, whatever the steps that you have summarized, convert each of them into Docker instructions. Just like this. This is the ideal approach to build a Docker file. What constitute a Docker image? So once you build your image, what will be there inside your image? A Docker image consists of several image layers. Each layer corresponds to certain instructions in your Docker file. If you see this Docker file closely, each of these instructions will build a layer in the Docker image when it is builded. Of this, from Ubuntu statement, if you see here, from Ubuntu instruction becomes the base layer of our image. This layer is basically from another image that is the Ubuntu image in this case. All the other instructions forms the subsequent layers with the different sizes just like your bread and toppings. Now we will see the basic Docker file instructions 
that we are using in day to day. First, the from instruction. From instruction is used to specify the parent image from which you are building your custom image. Second is the run instruction. If you want to execute any commands within the image, then you can use this run instruction. Next is label instruction. This is used to add any metadata to an image. Next is the expose instruction. This instruction is used to open the inbound port or the listening port of the container. Next is env instruction, which is used to set the environmental variables. Copy instruction is used to copy the local files into the file system of an image. When you run a container from this image, these files will be present in that container. Usually, we will copy the source code of an application. The basic difference between the add and the copy instruction is that add instruction copies or adds the remote URLs along with the files and directories. CMD or command instruction set default commands or parameters which can be overwritten from a Docker CLI when a container runs. The other way around, entry point instructions sets default parameters which cannot be overridden from a Docker CLI. Now we will see a demo on how to build a Docker image using Docker file. Step number one, connect to your Docker host and ensure Docker is up and running. Just to save the time, I have consolidated all the commands in a notepad. My Docker host is actually running in my local VM box. Here you can see the Docker is up and running. Now, it's step number two, create and review the Docker file. All these commands are available in the video description. Now, I'm going to create the Docker file using the VI editor. This docker file will build a customized web server image. Now we will review the docker file quickly. The first line, the from command will pull the Ubuntu base image. These run commands will update and install Apache web server. Copy command will copy the local index.html file to the destination. At last, you will expose the container in port number 80 and execute the Apache binary. In the same way, just review your index.html as well. Now, it's step number three. We are going to build the image using the Docker file. Once you execute the build command, the base image Ubuntu will be pulled from the Docker hub to create our customized image. This is because we are going to use the Ubuntu image as our base image.
Now our custom image vSpark slash web server is started to build. This process may take some time. Now you can see the custom image vSpark slash web server is built in. Now it's step number four, push the newly created image to the Docker Hub. In order to push it to your own repository, you need to log in to your Docker account. Plus you should have a repository created in the name of the tagged local image. Now I'm going to log in to my Docker Hub account. Just enter your username and the password. Now the login is succeeded. Now in Docker Hub, just see we have an empty repository already created in the name of vSparks slash web server. Our locally created customized image will be pushed to this repository only. Now push the tagged image. If the image name and the repository names are different, you may get an error in this step. Now our local image is getting pushed to our remote repository. Now you can see our local image is pushed to the Docker Hub now where our remote repository exists. Now you can see our image is pushed a few seconds ago. Now it's step number five. Remove the local images and the other traces. Now we have removed all the images. Now we don't have any images in our local host. It's step number six now. Test the new image by pulling it out from the Docker Hub and run a container out of it. Our container name is going to be happy. This command will run a container with our customized image and maps the container port number 80 to the Docker host port number 8080. This command will also run the container in the detached mode. Now you can see the container port is mapped to port number 8080 of host port. Now get the IP address of the Docker host and access it in the browser with port number 8080. That's it. Our customized web page came in the browser.
this is the summary of this video that we have discussed so far. Thank you from Vsparks and thank you for watching this video.